Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today I'd like to compare the Intel i7-6700K Skylake CPU with AMD's top-of-the-line AMD FX9590 and 8350. Now this comparison kind of feels unfair to me, since these AMD processors have been launched back in 2012 and 2013, but on the other hand, these actually still are AMD's current flagship models, at least at the time of this video. These three processors all come in at different price points, but which one does best for its money and do these AMD CPUs even have a chance due to their age? Let's find out. Now these are some really amazing results. Intel for sure did a really good job with Skylake, especially with the i7-6700K. Without any doubt, the 6700K stands out as the clear winner performance-wise, but that shouldn't be a surprise due to its much higher price point. With the i7-6700K, we see a major performance improvement in games over its predecessor, the 4790K. Often such a big improvement, you'd think you just upgraded the graphics card. But that's clearly not the case here, which makes Skylake very interesting for gamers. I tend to call that black magic. No, but jokes aside, while the 6700K might be good in all, the aging FX processors didn't even do as bad as I've expected them to do. But clearly, these aren't the ideal gaming processors anymore. When it comes to rendering, productivity and things like that, the FX CPU still aren't that bad though. There's nothing special going on there with the temperature sadly. But a power consumption of that i7-6700K is impressive. AMD's FX9590 and 8350 processors unfortunately can't be called efficient anymore compared to the performance they offer. Still, I don't want to bash these AMD processors. We all know that AMD is in a difficult situation and we have to respect that. What's undeniable though, and you just have to agree with me on this one, is that Intel currently is the way to go when wanting a solid CPU that's good for basically everything, from gaming to rendering. Then there, of course, is the massive price difference between these three processors. In my opinion, the FX9590 isn't exactly a good processor to go for. The FX8350 is much, much cheaper and features an unlocked multiplier allowing you to overclock it to the level of that 9590. But when looking at the prices of the i7-6700K and the FX8350, it's a tough decision. I mean, technically, it's a dead easy one. However, I'm not moving on to the topic now, as I'm sure this video will cause enough fan wars in the comments section already. Let's just hope AMD's rumored Zen CPUs in the future will be able to cope with Intel's latest Skylake release. For now, I just hope I could show you the performance difference between these three processors. There's more to come, so don't miss out on that. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.